At the State of the Union address last night, the House Minority Leader telegraphing all that President Obama needs to know about the opposition's willingness to work with him on the issues that really matter to most Americans. When the president asked if anyone from either party has a better approach to health care reform, Congressman Boehner actually raised his hand as if the president was going to call on him. He did not. The rest of his party equally transparent in showing exactly where they stand on a wide range of populist issues that they claim to care about by staying seated. On the day after his address at a town hall meeting in Florida, the president continuing his push for job creation. But at last night's State of the Union, when the president talked about the jobs his administration has already created, the Republicans in attendance seemingly defiantly anti-job. Because of the steps we took. There are about 2 million Americans working right now who would otherwise be unemployed. The GOP, it appears, preferring to give tax breaks to corporations which ship American jobs overseas. It is time to finally slash the tax breaks for companies that ship our jobs overseas and give those tax breaks to companies that create jobs right here in the United States of America. Oh, you know, I'm like that at a ball game. Sometimes I don't want to stand up for every pitch either. And the small businesses in this country that create jobs, not to mention the small business owners, most Republicans, apparently against them too. I'm proposing that we take $30 billion of the money Wall Street banks have repaid and use it to help community banks give small businesses the credit they need to stay afloat. Just about every week, the Federal Reserve now giving out a list of the small community banks which have failed and folded, but not the massive banks that were deemed too big to fail. When the president called for getting some of their bailout money back, Republicans were seemingly against that, too. But if these firms can afford to hand out big bonuses again, they can afford a modest fee to pay back the taxpayers who rescued them in their time of need. In the Republican response, meanwhile, Virginia Governor McDonnell and some people standing around him saying, we are blessed here in America with vast natural resources and we must use them all. Hard to be any more clear about the GOP's environmental and energy policies than that, demanding offshore oil drilling when the president had just said we needed to make tough decisions about offshore oil drilling. Hear the president tonight. Talk minority whip Cantor, meanwhile, today indicating on this network that the party of no is no more willing to work with President Obama now than it was before, among other things, calling job creation a bad thing because government helps create red tape. In the Senate, Republican James Inhofe today calling the president a liar, claiming that most of last night's speech was not true, his stock such that no one ever even noticed this. Senator McCain today denying the fact of the deficit that Obama inherited from the previous administration, ridiculing Mr. Obama for blaming it on President Bush. Thus, lots to talk about with our own Jonathan Alter, national affairs columnist at Newsweek magazine. John, good evening. Hi, Keith. Let me guess. Uh, Republican leadership in both houses congratulated themselves on doing a great job sitting on their hands while the president stole the throw the bums out horse out from under them and rode it out towards the Capitol building. You know, I, the, the party of no never disappoints. I mean, you didn't even mention that Rudy Giuliani oh, yes. said that. He admit that the president had not said anything about the Christmas Day bombing attempt when he did. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know if he was channel surfing or what, but the the um, ability of these folks to persist in their position as if it's getting them somewhere. They didn't look closely enough at the election returns in Massachusetts, of all places. The reason Scott Brown won was not because he was a Republican. He didn't use that in his advertising. Mm -hmm. He didn't bash Obama in his advertising. He won because he won independence, which is something the Democratic Party has to take a close look at. But uh, this idea that somehow there's a resurgence for the Republican Party or what they're doing is working is not. They look like they're sucking pickles. They are so sour and nasty, they're not winning the uh, appreciation of the American people. And what the, ta uh, the takeaway from the senator-elect's election 
was I thought that there is a there's a feeling um, of anti everything, anti big fill in the blank government business banks, uh, anti big unemployment. And that is, in fact, what the president went after. And he may have gone after it using Republican terms, small C, conservative terms, anything he could think of. But somebody got the bell rang in the White House. Yeah. Did it really not ring with the Republicans that they did not see that it wasn't just the letter R that made this happen or that they, that it, they really think it's just going to be duplicated like a Xerox machine? Well, they smell blood and yeah. they will pick up some seats. Uh, but I think that they don't recognize that their party is in decline. You cannot sustain yourself uh, over any period of time as a political party without any sense of governing responsibility. And I think the president did put it to them, look, right. you are in charge too, and, and you have to show uh, some leadership too. If you think that 41 votes determine things in the United States Senate, show some leadership. They don't even have a bill. At least the House has some kind of a health insurance bill. The Senate has not. The Senate Republicans have nothing. They offered nothing. It's a nihilistic approach. Looking at the bank stuff, which was obviously the theme last time, if the Democrats now introduce legislation punishing big banks, rewarding community banks, and putting up a statue of Ernie Banks, how do <laughs> the yeah, you guys right, in Wrigley Field? So. How do the Republicans actually vote no on this because they're going to have to, or they're going to be an appendage? to a democratic plan to punish the big banks and reward the community banks. It's a very cleverly structured tax. Mm -hmm. I think Obama should call it a tax, not a fee. You know, yeah. it, it is a tax. It's very hard for the Republicans to be against it. The only argument that they have, which Scott Brown used, is that uh, it won't work because the banks will just pass on these, these uh, costs to the consumer. The problem with that argument, the cleverness, is that it only applies to banks with more than $50 billion in mm -hmm. assets, which means if those banks try to pass on the cost to all of us, what happens? They lose massive market share. The right. small banks pick up all, their, uh, all of their business. So these guys are trapped. They're going to have to eat this. Mm -hmm. It cuts into about 5% of their profits. I wish it was a little bit bigger. But it's a start, and that money can then uh, go out to people who could really use it. Yeah, if they go the other yeah. direction, it, it, it just it's Arianna Huffington's turn. She goes and, and the small bank, move your money to the small bank campaign. Right, really exactly. picks up steam. Exactly. Yeah. It's a neat box that he put them in, and I don't. It, perhaps they see it, perhaps they don't. Jonathan Alter of Newsweek and MSNBC, always a pleasure. And give my regards to Ernie. <laughs> Thanks, Keith. The president versus the justice. Which is the breach of etiquette?